What's good? We rolling this morning. Enjoying Wimbledon a little bit, watching Venus play. I'm going to talk about this boxing. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow back with the Boxing Clinic. Shout out to the LDBC one time for the one time. And we talking about Terrence Crawford, uh, Julius and Dongo card. Now, I'm not excited for this fight. I mean, maybe closer to the fight, I'll get excited. Um, I like more competitive fights, you know, or at least competitive on paper. It can be competitive in the ring. I just don't see anybody um, touching Terrence Crawford at 140. Um, nobody. I mean, closest guy, I don't know. I don't know. Nobody's going to touch Terrence Crawford at 140 pounds right now. And, and Julius Ndongo is just a sacrificial lamb. And one thing I don't, I didn't like about this fight before I get into the undercard, um, one thing I did not absolutely like was the fact that they made this fight in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, Terrence Crawford has an advantage in a lot of areas in this fight, besides height and reach, I believe. Just looking at Ndongo, he looks a little bit taller and longer. He's probably going to be physically bigger than Ndongo. He, he probably is a better, well-rounded boxer than Ndongo. I watched Ndongo briefly over a stream with Ricky Burns. He's a solid fighter. You know, he did what he's supposed to do. He has all the advantages. And on top of that, you know, you're going to, you know, give him a fight at home. And an undefeated, uh, under, uh, undisputed lineal championship fight at home. I don't like that. Got Bob Aram top rank written all over it. So if Ndongo does pull off a victory... You know, he still can get fucked in Jeff Horn <laughs> or Pacquiao, you know, in the end of the day. And I don't like that. You know, he's he's really walking into a lose-lose situation. And, um, you know, that's one thing I just can't get with. They just piled it on. That's like that's like getting a, a, a corned beef sandwich with, that, with everything on it. And then you pile on, you know, some extra shit that don't need to be on there. And that's one thing I just didn't appreciate about it. They could have fought in New York, L.A., try to open up a new market. This is a big fight, supposedly, with the belts in. And today, it's been announced that the uh, co-feature, when everybody was seeing, oh, the, I'm going to call him the nail, the Usyk, the Ukraine guy. That's very impressive. I like him. Bronze medalist in 2012 London Olympic Games. You know, oh, he's going to be on the card. Dylan White's going to be on the card. Brian Jennings going to be on the card. I think Michael uh, Kyle ain't gonna be on the card as well. Some one of them, uh, or Shakir Stevenson, that's who it was, is gonna be on the card. Excuse me. All these guys gonna be on the card. Now you expect Shakir Stevenson. What is his third pro fight? Not to fight nobody. Okay, cool. We see Michael Collin last time out. Um, but who the fuck is these motherfuckers fighting? Excuse my French. Who? He fighting Craig fucking Baker, who hasn't fought since what June of 2016. You know. Then before that, he got knocked out on PBC by uh, Edwin Rodriguez. Come on, Bob. And, and people is excited for this shit, man. He giving you, I mean, getting away from HBO is giving this dude more freedom <laughs> to make bullshit ass fights and in-house fights. I'm sick of this shit, dog, with Bob Aaron. You know, it's an in-house fight, and they said, you know, ESPN would have some type of uh, say so and what the matchmaking look like. Get the fuck out of here. You know, give you another bullshit co feature. He's gonna nail this guy, man. The Ukrainian guy. His nigga named the nail. He's gonna nail this guy. And people was getting all excited with the name. I'm saying he, they don't understand what Bob Aaron about to do. He gave y'all guys names. He's gonna give them, he not gonna get them opponents because the undercard come out of the promoter's pocket. You know, this is a, is a mismatch. The, the main event very well can be a fucking mismatch. People are excited for, for what? I mean, I'm waiting for Crawford to step up in competition. Honestly. You know, I, he's done what he's supposed to do. I'm ready for him to go to welterweight. But I know when he go to welterweight, he ain't going to fight nobody. None of the PBC fighters. It's going to be a fucking dance around the ring with Bob Aram and Al Heyman. You know, nobody wants to sacrifice their lamb. Period. And then you got Brian Jennings and Dylan White also announced to be on the card, okay? And... Okay, why the fuck they ain't fighting each other? I understand that Brian Jennings just signed with, with, with top rank. Why Brian Jennings ain't fighting Dylan White? That's a better fight than any fight on this card, potentially. It's a more competitive fight. But they fighting in separate bouts. And then the piling on, the pile the bullshit on again, Amir Mansour wanted to fight Dylan White. But Dylan White team said, we looking, Eddie Hearn, we looking for a tall-handed right-hander. Man, tall right-hander. 
Who gives a shit, man? It's it's too much business in this boxing bullshit, man. It's too many guys that don't know shit about boxing. It's controlling the dollar, and it's a trickle down effect. Now the fighters want to be businessmen and and worry about the money. You supposed to fight. You got other motherfuckers to handle your business. You know, and you giving a bullshit ass product, and if, and expect people to 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 this make this a golden the golden age of boxing again, for people to have peak interest. UFC gives those those guys the fights they want all the time. I mean, we got a car full of fucking mismatches from the main event potentially being a mismatch, in my opinion, to the co feature being a total mismatch with no chance of an upset. To down to these two motherfuckers on the same carpet won't fight each other was going to be a mismatch. Could have had a Mir Mansoor versus Dylan White or Brian Jennings, but he asked for Dylan White and got turned down. So he's going to fight some fucking bum and Brian Jennings going to fight some fucking bum. That's what I'm talking about. People excited for this card. You know, you look at the Adrian Broner card. You got Charlo versus Sebastian Heelan, number one contender. You know, status for Triple G belt. Good. You got Trout versus... uh. Swift her, that's a good fight. You know, and Jerry Washington versus Big Baby, that's an okay fight. It's gonna be better than whichever heavyweight fight these two motherfuckers put on. I gotta say, man, I don't fuck with top rank like that, man. No offense to them, but 